No. Yeah, exactly. It wouldn't have had the time for the curiosity to peak to the range yeah, again. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know, like, I remember when, when they started airing clips for Balboa that the whole clip with him in the, in the meat house with Polly and he breaks mm-hmm. down a bit. And it was just such a, a heavy scene, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, like, it wouldn't have been the same, you know, back then. Yeah, well, I also think that Stallone had to go through some stuff as a as an artist. Yeah. You know, to, you know, you, you could almost say that, like, that straight-to-DVD purgatory he went through, mm-hmm. you know, um, it might have... I, I think he might have appreciated the, the second chance he was getting. And yeah. I know about Mo was really... was a tough sell. Oh. Amazingly... It was a tough sell. Give me a second. The, the yeah. computer was unplugged. I just saw the uh, the the battery light come on. Yeah. I was like, ten minutes. What? <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Sorry. No, no problem. But I mean, you, you think of a world where like financing a Rocky movie is is, is hard to do. Yeah. <laughs> and in Balboa, he had to do that. You know, so it was kind of like this really cool parallel between, you know, his, I guess, his struggle to get the first one made. Yeah, and, and also you go back and you look at that too, and like, Rambo was greenlit, I think, for a year or two before Rocky, mm-hmm. but Sly so really pushed for Rocky, like, they didn't want to give him Rocky at all. Yeah. And you would think that, like, they would give him Rocky over Rambo because they could get to a wider spectrum of people in age groups. You know, everybody's going to go see Rocky, whereas, yeah, Rambo's definitely got a much more, you know, niche market. Yeah. And the rating on that, too, is like, whew. Yeah, well, that's the other thing. Like, I know, like, the Expendables, you know, they had that whole um, (laughs) PG-13 fiasco with the last one. But it's kind of cool that it doesn't seem like there was ever any talk with, with Rambo about it being anything but an R-rated film. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Damn. And you, go, and you look at, like, like the rating over here versus, I guess, like, the rating in the States, you know? Like, yeah. Um, I know, like, I think First Blood was R over there. Yeah. Here it was 13. Yeah, okay. And even, like, Rambo, I was really surprised when the last one came out, that over here it was 16. Okay. Because yeah. over there, it was R for sure, right? Oh, so. yeah, 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 totally. <clears throat> yeah. Play around the ratings a lot. Yeah, yeah. But the other thing is, it's weird because the rate, like, movies in general have gotten so much, like, you used to be able to get away with, like, before, especially here in the States, before the PG-13 rating. Like, you look at a movie, like, um, I'm trying to think, like, a, a pre-PG-13 movie, like, you know, you used to, like, get away with a lot more because it was either PG or R. There was mm. no middle ground. Yeah. So it almost seems like... And that was the strangest thing for me about The Expendables. It's like, yeah, I guess if you look at, like, some of those 1980s Stallone and Schwarzenegger movies, they could have been PG-13. Yeah. <clears throat> the, the R rating also... I think it informs audiences or viewers or potential viewers you know, as to what they're getting. And yeah. I think a lot of action fans, especially from, like, the Sly and Schwarzenegger sort of fandom, are really, you know, they want that R rating on it. Yeah. You know, you know even if it's not, <clears throat> even if it's going to be as tame as a TV-13 from the 1980s, it's just the fact that you know you're going to hear some foul language. Definitely. You know? Definitely. Yeah, it does make a difference. Yeah, yeah. So it'll be interesting because I know they... Stallone in, in typical Stallone fashion. He doesn't seem afraid to uh, um, apologize for mistakes that he's made. <laughs> but uh, it seems like they won't have this discussion with Expendables 4, which uh, Expend- Expendables 4 is going to be really interesting to see how that whole thing pans out anyway. Because yeah. It did terrible business here. Um, but I, from what I understand, it was only green lit, the fourth one, because of all the business it did in China. Really? Yeah. I heard yeah. something about filming in China. Yeah, probably, because that's where the audience is. Damn. But I think that would be pretty cool, too, because I think that would be a cool sort of um, location change for that series. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they've been doing it a lot in, like, Bulgaria. and Yeah. 
Yeah, it would be nice to see them switch that up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely hope they bring in the hard R. I would love to see more of, like, the psychological side of Dolph Lundgren. Oh, yeah. A little more, you know, like, get some stuff like that. Yeah, and, and actually kill <clears throat> some this time, too. Not like a not like a, a, a kid character you bring in for five minutes, like a Liam Hems, Hemsworth or, you know. Like, <laughs> that's why the last movie, like, as much as it came me to see, I'm like, oh, man, I, I hope, you know, I'm kind of hoping here that Terry Crews doesn't make it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, uh, you know, I mean, with, it's funny that over the course of this series, they're called The Expendables, and no major character. Yeah, yeah, no one's dying. <laughs> you know, Jet Li is sort of absent, but he's still alive. Yeah, he has his, like, cameo here and cameo there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, Jet Li. But it's, it's great. I mean, this almost feels like also, like, the, um, I don't want to say last hurrah, but, you know, kind of like, the last hurrah of the real physical Stallone in front of the camera, at least. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it helps and that he's got all these other characters, too. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, we've talked about it on the slide cast before, too, about how, like, I really hope that there's a point in, in, in the future where Stallone goes back to that writing and directing aspect of himself. I mean, if you look at, like, Homefront, that was a good screenplay. It was. You know, it was a good movie. I mean, it was based on a book. So, I mean, he's working from a template. Mm -hmm. But also, like, it, I mean, I think as a director, he didn't get to take that craft as far as he could have. Yeah. You know, and I think with age, he could probably turn in some really good movies just behind oh, yeah. the camera. Oh, definitely. Oh, definitely. You know? And that, that was Rambo 4. It's supposed to be yeah, Rambo yeah. 4 also. I love James he, Franco in that movie. He's yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean totally Rambo different. Is solid. Yeah. And, and it's one of those things where you think about, like, him working with other actors, um, you know, and being able to tell, like, uh, a story as intense as Rambo mm -hmm. 4, but in somebody else's sort of playground. I don't know. To me, it's cool because I'm a fan of Stallone, the director. I mean, yeah. even like even when we talked about um, staying alive uh, on episode five uh, of, this, of the slidecast, like for me, I thought there were some good directorial touches in that movie, and I know that Stallone's gone on record saying that he was out of his element and 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 this and that. But I, I think if you watch it, you can at least see uh, a di directorial tone there. Mm -hmm. You know, like the voice is solid. And as long as you have a consistent voice, like, like yeah, the, the end result might, might be bad, but at least you put out something that has a distinctive look or feel to it. Like yeah. John Carpenter's like that. You turn on the TV and you see a John Carpenter movie, you know it's a John Carpenter movie. Yeah. They, they're not all great, but you know it's him. Yeah, like James Cameron. They've mm -hmm. got that signature. Yeah, I got to watch Staying Alive yeah. again. I haven't seen that in forever. What's that? I, I got to watch Staying Alive again. Yeah, yeah. And John Travolta was jacked in that movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's, that was one of the things that came with Stallone being director. Yeah. You know, he had that training regimen, I mean. I can it's, just imagine him in, in the Rambo sequel. Like, early on when they were going to bring him in. Because he had amazing lines in that script. Yeah. He had some amazing scenes in that script. You yeah. know, it was just incredible. Well, was that was that the James Cameron draft? Yeah. Well, yeah. Like, there's a scene where, like, they're they're in a hangar with the plane mm -hmm. before they take off, and like, I think it's Lifer and Doyle, the two guys who initially fly Rambo out. Yeah. One of them smoking a cigarette or something. Rambo comes up and takes a cigarette, and he's talking to John Travolta. He's trying to scare him, and he like throws the cigarette into into like a puddle of gas under the yeah. plane. <laughs> <laughs> just crazy stuff like telling Trotman to tie him to a chair and leave him here because yeah. I can do it without him and John Travolta with tie hookers and and like you know every every time he gets into trouble you know Rambo tells him that's one or that's two yeah. and then they're interrogating they're, they're beating up uh, Travolta with a like a strip of tire they're whipping him with it and they're like you're going to tell us blah 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 and he's like no because that would be that would be three <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you 
Do you think tonally that would have been too much of a shot from First Blood? It, it, it definitely would have been a buddy movie. Yeah. Even though Travolta gets kind of taken out, like, not killed, but, like, just, he can't really move around through yeah. half of it. But it would have definitely been more of a buddy movie. Like, there's jokes with Ko between, you know, Ko and, uh... Um, yeah. Like, she's, you know, she says something like, this guy's a fool in Vietnamese. He's like, what is she saying? He's like, oh, well, you're Dinky Dow, like this great soldier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it would have it been a, very much more of a buddy movie. Yeah, which, which would have been interesting because, like, 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 for me, I think the tonal shift might have been a little too extreme. Yeah. But believe me, that's a movie I want to, I want to see, like, you know. Who knows, maybe one day, I mean, they'll get to the point with these digital actors where they can just, you know... Fly in, uh, you know, the thirty-five-year-old <laughs> Stallone and the oh, that'd be 30, amazing. thirty-year-old Travolta, and just make the movie that they could have. I buy that. Mm-hmm. I love the script. The script is great. It's just. Or you know what else? They could do a comic book, like um, you know they've done. Yeah. IDW does a lot like that. They recently did um, Harlan Ellison's original script for the Star Trek episode, "The City on the Edge Forever." Okay. It's you know, and that script, his original script, was altered a lot for the TV broadcast. So, you know, they, you know, they went back and they worked from his script and they put out like a five issue comic series. That would be so, amazing. Yeah. That would be pretty cool. If, if somebody got on board with that and they were like, Hey, let's take these scripts that never were and, uh, get mm-hmm. the likeness right. And, uh, I, I think that'd be wicked market for it. That would make some, that would make some serious though. Yeah. I just saw Star Trek two at the drive in. Oh my God. Oh, that was amazing. Yeah. Con, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was so good. That yeah. and Raiders of the Lost Ark. And That's a great double feature. Damn. Yeah. That's my first drive-in experience. That was pretty oh, the hook. Very, there's actually, um, here in North, North Las Vegas, there's a, a multi-screen drive-in. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they have five screens. Oh, sweet. And they show double features. And um, the cool thing about it is it gets dark here a little bit earlier. So, like, when I was living in Jersey, if you went to the drive-in in Pennsylvania, in the summer, you had to wait till almost 9 o'clock. Oh, yeah, for sure. And then the second movie's not getting over till close to 2 sometimes. You know, whereas like here, you know, the movie, they can start, like, like this time of year, it's, like, dark out. Mm-hmm. Um, they can start the movie before 7 o'clock, the first movie. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Movie. I love that yeah. whole concept of... Yeah, and well... Khan is still my, my favorite Star Trek movie. I got teared up, man. Yeah. I see it like ten times. Yeah, yeah, e- yeah, even though, but I've seen it like ten times and I still get teary, you know. Yeah. Well that's like, like me with E. T. I got the um, Book of the Green Planet the other day. My friend had it. I saw that. On his bookshelf and I was like, damn. I'm like, where'd you get this? He's like, Oh, it's been there forever. I'm like, okay, yeah. I'm taking this home. That's cool. I can't wait to read that thing. I heard it was really bad, but... Yeah, yeah. I want to give it a chance. Mm-hmm. But, you- I mean, like, that's the other thing. Like, the fact that, like, you were able to still get, you know, hit the emotional notes you needed to hit for Wrath of Khan, or at least the emotional notes the filmmakers wanted you to hit. Mm-hmm. Like, for me, that's, like, the discussion I always have with people about spoilers. I think, like, a lot of people tend to overreact. Because, for me, it's like, if the story's good, it shouldn't matter if you know... Exactly. Like, if you really want to see it, you don't care about... Yeah, and if it's a well-told story, it doesn't matter. Because it's more how the story's being told as opposed to the story. Like, I know Hitchcock had a famous quote that was like, um, shock, not surprise. Mm -hmm. You know? And it was one of those things where, you know, it was like the audience knowing something is, is, is about to happen. Sometimes it's, it's a lot better than the audience being in the same seat as the character in the movie. Because, mm-hmm. you know, when the audience is disconnected, 